Tammy Rexton. I'm the Director of Business Development. A brief history of 10 years of advertising experience, four years in traditional media, and six years in digital. I've been with Sim Partners since 2009 and work very closely with several brand advertisers. I wanted to introduce you to Adam Dorfman. Uh, Adam Dorfman is a search marketing expert and partner here at Sim Partners. He has 13 years of uh, experience in the digital marketing industry, and he started his career at Proceed Interactive and then moved on over to Orbitz, where he managed the SEO for Orbitz.com as well as other digital media strategies. In 2006, he became partner at Sim Partners and works with a number of Fortune 1000 businesses. So with that, I'll hand the reins to Adam Dorfman and he'll go through the agenda. Thanks, Tammy. So we're going to be going over a four major points today. Uh, the first is we're going to be reviewing the local and mobile search marketplace, what the space looks like today. We're going to go over six specific tactics that you can use in order to improve your national brand, local, and mobile presence. And we're also going to be looking at performance and tracking, how best to implement that, what kind of things you should look for, and what kind of results, finally, that you can hopefully uh, see by implementing a national local strategy. So let's do a quick background on the local and mobile search marketplace right now. I, I've been in this, as Tim mentioned, I've been in the search industry for oh, about 13 years now, and I, I, I kind of see the local and mobile search space right now akin to how traditional SEO was in 1999, 2000, 2001. There's so much opportunity. It's still in its infancy. It has, there's no, there's, there's still so much that can be done. It's very exciting. It's fast moving. And it's something that there's still a lot of opportunity for businesses to take advantage of too. There's not quite so many entrenched players when it comes to that. Uh, just some quick stats. There's 73% of all online activity at this point is related to local content, as far as uh, this is something from Google. Comscore has also released studies that show that 82% of local searchers follow up with a phone call or show up in person. And 66% of Americans use local search to find local businesses. So really what, what we're talking about with those last two numbers is how you, how you do online locally can very much have a major impact on your offline revenue and getting people to your individual locations. So these stats were just published yesterday and they're fascinating. They also come from Google. Um, so according to, to Google uh, yesterday, they're, they're saying now that 69% of US mobile users access the internet on their phones daily. Uh, again, this just came out yesterday. The most interesting thing when looking at this is if you look at ma large online advertisers, only 21% of them have mobile optimized sites. So it's pretty clear there's a big gap there in terms of the amount of opportunity when it comes to serving mobile users a great experience on their mobile devices and how few, how few people that are actively advertising online are, are actually serving, serving good, good user experiences. So interestingly enough, uh, the search results, while changing quite a bit, you're going to see pay-per-click, local search results, and, and traditional SEO on, on this uh, fairly, standard, fairly standard search results page for a local search query. Uh, this is for Edison, New Jersey carpet cleaning. Um, it, it's very interesting in the sense that at one point, we often used the expression that 1 plus 1 equals 2 in the search results. And what we were talking about... One plus one. Sorry, one plus one equals three. Thank you, Tammy, in the search okay. results. And what we were talking about was appearing in both organic as well as paid search results can give you the appearance of being more of an authority on any given search results pages. Well, now you have the opportunity through local to have at least three, oftentimes, if this is a, a local a local related query. So you're going to be able to show up in the pay-per-click, uh, the paid ads. You're going to be able to show up in the local search results, as well as potentially the traditional uh, SEO results. And that doesn't get into, sometimes you'll also see images or videos also appear in these types of search results, or Google+, Plus, which we'll get into later. So there's, there's so much opportunity to really maximize the amount of real estate that you take up on search results pages. Now, besides just making sure that you're there, Tammy is going to go through a, 
interesting uh, analogy in terms of how people potentially access these different search results on different devices and how things can appear differently. So. Thanks, Adam. So it's pretty evident that uh, people use a cross platform consumption across all these different devices in order to find what they're looking for. So for example, if I'm looking for a in new insurance company, um, I may go to work, um, get a couple quotes on my office la laptop during my research phase, um, you know, review those quotes on my way home on, on my smartphone or my iPhone, you know, re review which ones are the best for me and maybe even look at some reviews about those insurance companies. Once I get home, I, I, I'm in the comfort of my home and sitting on the couch on my iPad, I may decide to go ahead and, and purchase one of those insurance providers or insurance plans. So it's, it's pretty clear, um, you know, you do it yourself, you consume many different types of media across, uh, across your day, throughout your day, and um, it's pretty evident that you need to be present as a brand uh, consistently across these different devices. And one of the best forms that we've seen is local search, is, is one of the most efficient ways for brands to be present across all different devices. Uh, and, and simply because the search results, um, the local search results are very similar across all, all three devices, from tablets to, to laptops to your smartphone. Uh, keep in mind also the local search clicks are free clicks to you. So unlike pay-per-click advertising where you're paying every every time whether they purchase or not, these are free clicks to your business. So with that, Adam, do you want to go on to the next slide? Sure. So kind of building off what Tammy thanks Tammy. Building off of what Tammy just went over. If you if you look at this this slide here, what you're gonna see is as Tammy said, the search results for this the data that Google is using to serve up desktop and mobile search results is exactly the same. Same data sources, same everything. However, the way that they display this data varies significantly between laptops and desktops and tablets and smartphones. And why is the local search results so important? Well, in Google's eyes, and, I'm, I, and it's safe to say this is based on lots of user data behavior that they've collected over the last couple of years, they've seen that what users want to see when doing a search for a local related clear, uh, query is first and foremost a local search result. So they're much more likely to serve the map data, your Google Places data, and so on when you're searching from a tablet or a smartphone. So having a good presence there is as the amount of usage of mobile devices um, increases uh, when accessing the internet, uh, having a, again, that strong listing in the places in the local search algorithms is extremely important. So we wanted to also talk about not just how ranking changes, but how users' behavior and how they interface with search results have changed over the, the last couple of years since Google started really pushing the, the local search results. So here you're looking at an eye tracking survey that SEO Moz released recently for the keyword, and this is, this is a search query for pizza. And up until the local search results, we started getting the, the image search results and so on that, are, that were integrated into the primary Google search results, you would see very much that F pattern where people would start in the upper left-hand corner and then go down and then to the right. So uh, very typical. That was why the, having the number one organic ranking or number one paid search ranking would, would have uh, a huge incremental increase or a huge high, much higher percentage in total clicks that would be generated uh, than something further down the page. Well, if you look here, what you're going to see is that the local search results just due to how they're formatted to having the icons and having all this review data and everything else, people's eyes are going straight to those results. All those results above them are organic, traditional organic results, and you can see that most people are skipping right over them and, over them and going straight to straight to the, to the local results. Now, something probably to be expected for a keyword like pizza, but this next slide that we're going to show you from the same study shows what happens when it's a brand search. Now, you would think that somebody doing a search for a brand would be much more interested in potentially looking at the company's 
primary website. So if you do a search for Pizza Hut, you think most people are going to be, their eyes are going to be looking for that primary organic listing, the authoritative site for that, and visiting that. Well, that's not the case, as the side tracking study has shown. Again, even though it's a branded search query for Pizza Hut, they're going straight to the local search, their eyes are going straight to the local search results again, uh, not to the store. They'd rather access the local business information on Google itself as opposed to clicking into Pizza Hut's website and finding it there. Again, having a presence on the local search results in Google's primary search results is becoming more and more important, not just in terms of generating clicks and phone calls, but also making sure that your brand appears as frequently as possible. Okay, so now we're going to get into specific tips and tactics. Um, and we're going to start with the foundation. So if you look at this pyramid here, we're going to start with what we consider essential, the foundation to any, prime, uh, any strong local search strategy. Uh, and then we're going to work our way up to more advanced tactics. So if you're a, a national brand, wh where do you start with, uh, where do you start when it comes to optimizing your, your local search presence on the internet? Well, what we recommend is beginning with distribution. Uh, and when it comes to distribution, what we're talking about is making sure that your primary business information, specifically your name, address, phone number, and URL to your website or to your uh, businesses or your, your individual locations webpage is as accurate as possible in as many places as possible. So how do you do that if you're a national brand with hundreds or thousands of locations? Well, going into Yelp and City Search and YellowPages.com and SuperPages.com and the hundreds and hundreds of directories where that information could potentially appear and manually making those those making that information correct on uh, uh, for all hundred of your locations is is not feasible. It's not scalable. It's not a good use of your resources. So what we recommend is using the data aggregators to distribute this information for you. It's something where you can work directly with a company that already has access and is already feeding directly da data directly to these businesses. And in our experience, they do a fantastic job. We highly recommend Locallys and InfoUSA. Uh, both of those we've seen great success with, with all of our clients. And to a lesser extent, we also recommend Axiom as well. Um, but definitely Locallys and InfoUSA are must when it comes to distributing the data. Now, it's important to remember that sending your data off once and then just forgetting about it is, is not going to be enough, especially as this, this space uh, matures and things become, uh, things become uh, more competitive. You're going to want to make sure that you continue to distribute and redistribute that data and continue to let the data aggregators and them in turn let the, the directories that they end up sending the data to uh, realize that this information is fresh, accurate, and something that is coming from the brand itself. Now, how frequently should you do that? Well, it really depends on the data aggregator. Locallys accepts data, through, accepts and processes data throughout the month. So if you ever have any update, we would recommend sending it to them immediately. In addition, we also recommend sending data for locations that hasn't changed uh, at, least at, at least every two weeks. And if you can do it more frequently, that's great, but minimum every two weeks saying, hey, here's our full data set, go ahead and process it. Now, InfoUSA and Axiom, accept and process data on a monthly basis. So for them, we would recommend doing it every month. Again, sending all of your location data to, to these data aggregators once a month for InfoUSA and Axiom and every two weeks for locally. Okay, so let's talk about tip number two, which is claiming and optimizing Google Places and Bing local listings. The good news for national advertisers, both Google Places and Bing local listings allow for bulk processing of data. Okay, so you're not going to have to, unlike a year or two ago when all of this launched, you're not going to have to send out requests for postcards for all 500 or 5,000 of your business locations and collect the pins manually and rely on your general managers to, uh, or your business owners, your franchisee owners to, to notice that there's a Google postcard and then send, send you the pins so you can claim it. No, no, no. At this point, you should be able to manage all of this from a corporate account and it's something that is, is extremely important. So what do you do when you're claiming and verifying your listings on Google Places and, and Bing? Well, 
the most important thing that you can do is to make sure that that data that you're already sending to the data aggregators and are existing on all the local directories matches as closely as possible with the data that you're uploading to Google Places and being local. Um, specifically, again, the name, address, phone number, and website URL, all of those things, the more closely that they're associated with one another, the more consistent that you can make them, the more that they're going to seem like they're an authoritative an authoritative uh, source as far as Google is concerned when they're when they're published or when they're serving up their search engine uh, search engine results. Okay, so tip number three: you're going to also want to build unique and optimized location pages. So Matt Cutts, principal engineer at Google, has said uh, on his blog that you want to make a web page for each store location on your website. Uh, and what that means is, you know, your store pages, it's not just good enough to have search results that list all of your different store locations at this point. You really need to, if somebody does a search for a Chicago dentist, if you're a national dentist chain, or, I don't know, um, you need to make sure that the, that each individual location has its own unique web page. And what's on that unique web page, again, we're talking name, address, phone number, matches as closely as possible with what you're distributing to the data aggregators as well as what you're submitting to Google and Bing. Uh, again, that's another authoritative citation, another authoritative source that Google can use when determining what results to show up, uh, especially with these, the, the way that they're returning merged, rank, or more merged search results now that take into account not just local ranking factors, but SEO and organic ranking factors as well. So having unique and optimized location pages is essential. Some of the information that you're going to want to have on there is location-specific information like photos, descriptions, videos, what areas you service. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that your title tags, metadata, and micro formatted, uh, and your micro formats are all complete, completely optimized and filled out. You're going to want to make sure that your pages load fast, especially if you're talking about a directory of hundreds or thousands of locations. Again, that really helps with Google indexing all of these these locations, and extremely important and something that we come across regularly, you're going to want to avoid duplicate content of these location pages at all costs. So you need to make sure that there's only one instance of these location pages residing on your website, if at all possible. Uh, if there is more than one, we highly recommend, at the very least, implementing canonical tags that point to your primary location page data. Uh, but again, if possible, you, you really want to remove any secondary vari variations of these location pages. Okay, so let's talk about mobile location pages. So it's important that you have great optimized location pages on your website for each of your locations for people that are visiting from desktop, let's say, or their laptops. What happens when somebody is visiting one of these pages from a mobile device? Well, you're not necessarily going to want to serve up the same serve up the same user experience that you would with a desktop version of the page. You know, with the desktop version of the page, if you're at B2B, you may have a web form to generate leads that you're going to want to have uh, on the desktop or laptop version of the page. Generating leads through web forms is, generally doesn't work as well on mobile devices. If somebody's on their iPhone or their, or their Android or their Blackberry, they're going to be less likely to want to fill out a web form on, on that kind of device. So which you haven't said. Well, in our experience, you really want to focus on the items that are best suited for the mobile audience. That would include things like a, a primary call to action. In this case, we would highly recommend that be a phone call. Um, but you're also going to want to have information like hours of operation, the your address with a, a, a map as well so that people can easily find directions to your store. Um, we also recommend in, including social media buttons and things like that as people use 50% uh, of those using social media are interacting with the mobile device. Okay, so let's talk some more about social integration and location and location mobile pages. Uh, over the last couple years, it's become very clear that all of the search engines consider social data extremely important and essentially the future when it comes to their search engine, when, when it comes to their ranking algorithms. Uh, Bing's had an agreement with Facebook for the last couple of years, and if you do searches regularly on that, you're gonna, and you're, you happen to be logged in or cooking into Facebook, you're going to see 
other what your friends on Facebook are also doing and what they're clicking on or liking and, and things like that. It's fully integrated in the search results. And Google now is heavily pushing Google Plus, and we're gonna we're gonna get into that. The the what what a but the most important thing to to take away from this is if you aren't pushing people to like your page, to plus one your page, to share your page on all the different on all the different social networking sites, you need to make sure that that you add those to these individual location pages. It's highly important. So let's talk about Google Plus. So over the last couple weeks, I would assume that anybody that is visiting this this uh, webinar is likely to have heard that Google has rolled out an update to their ranking algorithms that heavily pushes their own social media platform, quote unquote, and that's they're calling it Google Plus. Um, they clearly see this as a huge priority when it comes to improving their search engine ranking alg algorithm as well as just getting people to interact with all Google products more and more. If you haven't started talking internally about making sure that you have a corporate level optimized Google Plus page as well as potentially individual location Google Plus pages, it's something that we that I, I would highly recommend you begin doing. Uh, it's clearly going to be the future. It's clearly going to become more and more important as Google as Google um, continues to collect more data. It's going to become more influential in their search engine ranking algorithms. And if you don't get, uh, if you don't start optimizing for that now, you're going to be left behind with other companies that do. Just one more slide on Google Plus just to show how impactful it is. So this is a search for the keyword real estate, okay? If you look at the amount of real estate, no pun intended, that these, these search results, uh, that Google is giving Google Plus uh, search results, uh, in their search results, you're going to see um, that it's incredible. Uh, you know, you have those individual or those little um, pictures at the top that show pictures of your friends on Google Plus and you can see exactly what they what they've shared or liked that's relevant to real estate and click on that and just get those search results you can see within the main search results that you can if the page shows up that again somebody that you're friends with has liked that's going to that's going to tell you that and it's going to make you much more likely to click on it and even crazier is if you look in that upper right hand corner you can see the amount of real estate that they're giving to people with Google Plus profiles now Ray and Walheed are getting an incredible amount of eyeballs, traffics, and clicks to their Google Plus page, and the amount of money, if you think that a brand like Century 21 would be paying in order to show up in that real estate, it's almost mind-boggling how much free traffic and how much they're benefiting from this. It's safe to say that Ray and Walheed, this is a temporary thing for them. Google is going to collect more data, and more likely than not, if they choose to continue having a box like that appear there, it's going to be more for brands like Century 21 or Remax or something along those lines. Nevertheless, uh, again, if you are a national brand and you don't have a Google Plus strategy in place, you could be missing out on free listings and free traffic, free branding, free everything uh, right, right in that upper right-hand corner on the search results pages. Okay, so the final tip uh, is going to, we're going to be talking about ratings and reviews and why they're important. So after, I would say after citations, after optimizing your Google Plus pages, and after creating a well SEO'd and optimized location page off of your primary domain, the next most important thing that you can do to influence the ranking algorithms would be to generate ratings and reviews. Uh, it's it's been our experience in our studies, or through studies that we've done, that we've seen businesses that have been fully optimized in all places where we're just kind of lagging in the seven pack, maybe at the bottom of the seven pack, or on page two, once you clicked into map listings, if they can add 20 or 30 reviews from different sources, you can see a nice bump in terms of rankings and how those and how the site performs when it comes to clicks and phone calls generated and, and everything else. So where do you want to focus on creating reviews? Well, Google is probably going to be the place you're going to, you're, you're going to want to start. Uh, they certainly are showing those reviews. They're pushing those reviews as much as possible. That said, we've been able to 
see that they are still very much taking into account reviews on places like Yelp or TripAdvisor or Angie's List or all the other places that collect reviews into their ranking algorithms. So we would recommend if, if a client asks, where would you like us to leave a review, we would say start with Google. I would push Google first, but I wouldn't discourage people from leaving reviews on some of these other sites as it's going to make for a more natural um, and just a more natural sort of review uh, profile throughout the Internet. Okay, so let's recap all of the tips that we've gone through. Uh, so you want to start off by distributing your data through the data aggregators to as many places as possible. Again, that's local needs, Info USA, and Axiom. And you're going, to make, you're going to want to make sure to continue distributing it. Again, just doing it once is probably not going to be enough. Second, you're going to want to claim and optimize your Google Places and Bing local listings. Third, you're going to want unique and optimized location pages that live on your website. Four, you're going to want mobile location pages. And five, you're going to want social media integration. And finally, uh, ratings and review management. Okay, so you've done all of these things. You've implemented all of these tactics and your question then is, well, how do I know if it's working? There's a number of different, different things, a number of different places that you can source data. Uh, in our, our experience, some of the places that companies use to gather data, and there's dozens and dozens, but some of them could be web analytics like Google Analytics or Omniture. Uh, others may be, uh, another place might be Google Places where you can look at the total impressions, total clicks from your local listings, amount of times people click on driving directions, you can get that kind of data in there. And finally, you can keep track of the amount of calls that are being, uh, that are coming in to these local businesses. If you see an uptick in the total phone calls that your individual locations are receiving, that's a good, good sign that things are, things are going well from your local your local search strategy. So here's an example of a client of ours that we've been working with since 2008 that have implemented all of the strategies that you've seen there and the kind of results that, that they've seen. And, and what they've seen is that at this point, their location and mobile pages are the second largest driver of traffic to their main website. Now, this is a B2B with over 500 locations nationwide. Uh, they're mostly looking at what kind of leads that they can generate. And you can see that, that collectively the, the improvement from 2008 until last year, and that's already continued on to this year, has been fantastic in terms of clicks generated. More importantly is something that they shared with us is the quality of the clicks and the leads and the phone calls that are being generated by their local search strategy is much higher than any other source of traffic. So while it's the second largest of driver of traffic to brand.com, and for the record, the largest driver is people typing in directly brand.com, uh, it's the largest driver of quality leads and uh, phone calls and new business for this, for this brand. You know, just one more. Uh, case study that we did. Um, this is for a client that had multiple locations nationwide uh, in the hospitality vertical. And we looked at, and this is something where we're managing all of their paid search as well as all of their local search. We managed all of their online, online strategy. Everything was tracked strictly to an ROI conversion using Omniture. Um, and what we saw with paid search is we were able to achieve a blended 18 to 1 ROI. And what that means is that for every dollar that we spent, we were able to generate $18 in top line revenue uh, in return. In the local, when it came to local search, we saw uh, five times that amount when it came to ROI. So we saw 102, 102 to 1 ROI. So for every dollar that they spent on local search strategies, they were able to generate $102. So what does this mean? What, what we often try and point out with this slide is a lot of times we know companies are struggling to even maintain their existing paid search advertising spends year over year. And we, we understand that. It's, it's paid search can get very expensive. What we often recommend is if you have X amount of budget devoted towards paid search and you have no new, uh, no new budget for local search this year, but you realize that the opportunity is there and it's something that you really want to take advantage of, we highly recommend um, 
maybe slicing off some of your paid search budget and pushing it towards local search. The incremental clicks and revenue that you can generate is is well worth um, well worth at the very least testing. All right, thank you, Adam. Sure. Feel free to contact me, uh, Tammy Recton at trecton at simpartners.com, and here's my contact information. And again, um, I'll forward this presentation out to you within 24 hours. So thank you again for joining us today, and I hope you have a great rest of your, of your day.